You might think this is how your car looks when it turns, but in reality, it's actually like this. Take a look here, the steering angles of these two wheels are different. In most passenger cars, the inner wheel's steering angle is usually larger than the outer wheels. But in F1 cars, it's often the opposite. The inner wheel's steering angle is smaller than the outer wheels. Sounds crazy, right? Well, in this episode, let's dive in and find out why. We usually assume that when a car turns, both front wheels should steer at the same angle like this. But does that actually help your car turn better? Here's the thing. Turning a car is basically like drawing a circle on the ground. Since the rear wheels are fixed, the center of that circle must be somewhere along the rear axle's extended line. Now let's add one front wheel. At this point, the turning center is where this wheel's vertical line intersects with the rear axle's extension. In fact, the car is rotating around this exact point. Now let's add the left front wheel. If both front wheels turn at the same angle, the turning center for the left wheel would end up here, meaning both wheels would follow circles of the same size. But here's the problem. When a car turns, the inner wheel always follows a shorter path than the outer wheel. So having both front wheels follow the same size circle actually makes turning less efficient. To fix it, let's adjust the left front wheel steering angle so that its vertical line meets at the original turning center. Now, both wheels follow two perfectly sized concentric circles, one big and one small. In 1816, a German wheelwright named George Lincolnsperger came up with something pretty genius. He realized that if you shorten the tie rod and position the extensions of the two steering arms so they intersect at the center of the rear axle, you'd create perfect steering geometry. That's how the famous Ackermann steering geometry was born. But here's the twist. It's not named after George. His agent, Rudolf Ackermann, filed the patent for the design in the UK in 1818. So, in the end, the credit and the name went to Rudolf. But that's just one piece of the steering puzzle. Remember the F1 car we saw at the start of the video? When it takes a corner, the outer front wheel actually turns at a larger angle than the inner front wheel. That's the complete opposite of the perfect Ackermann steering geometry, where the outer wheel turns less than the inner one. So what's going on here? The answer lies in the tires. Real-world tires are not rigid. For comfort and safety, tires are soft and elastic. That is to say, when you steer, it will inevitably cause the tires to deform. Look here. When the tires deform, the actual traveling direction of the wheels will be inconsistent with their original direction. The lower the speed during a turn, the smaller the impact. The higher the speed, the greater the impact. Because when your speed is higher, the outer front wheel will receive greater pressure, and the tire will deform more. So automotive engineers will adjust the Ackermann geometry according to the specific usage scenarios of the vehicle. For example, the steering geometry of a family car is relatively close to the perfect Ackermann geometry because you won't take a family car and take a corner at 200 miles per hour on your way to the grocery store. However, an F1 car, which needs to pass a large number of corners at high speed, will adopt an anti ackerman angle. When an F1 car turns, the pressure on the outer wheel is much greater than that on the inner wheel, and sometimes the inner wheel can even be off the ground. The anti ackerman angle can make the turning angle of the outer wheel larger to compensate for the understeer caused by tire deformation. Steering a vehicle might seem like simple stuff, but there's a lot more happening under the hood. When you turn a steering wheel, your input travels down the steering shaft and rotates a pinion gear. This gear meshes perfectly with the steering rack, pushing it sideways. That movement then transfers to the attached rods and steering knuckles, which pivot the front tires. In other words, when you turn the wheel to the left, the rack shifts to the right, causing the tires to angle left. The more you twist the wheel, the further the rack moves and the tighter the turn becomes. It all sounds complicated, but thanks to clever engineering, all these parts work together so smoothly you barely notice the magic behind your every turn. All right, now we can drive. Wait, something's off. This steering wheel feels way too heavy. After barely any driving, you're sweating buckets, not exactly the look for a true car enthusiast. Nobody wants to roll into the office drenched in sweat. That's why the power-assisted steering system was born, to let drivers cruise with elegance. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a demonstration of one of the most remarkable advancements in automobile history. Power steering takes practically all the effort out of turning the wheels. Look at that. As easy as dialing a phone. The mechanism is pretty complex, so let's simplify it. 
At its core, power steering is all about saving you effort, but not so much that you're not actually doing any work. Otherwise, it wouldn't really feel like you're driving. When it comes to steering assist, the most common system you have to talk about is hydraulic power steering. This system features a hydraulic pump that's directly connected to the engine. As soon as the engine starts, the pump kicks into gear. The basic structure of this power steering system is as follows. Piston operation. At the bottom, there's a piston that can move left and right. When you turn the wheel, a hydraulic circuit opens up, allowing oil to push the piston and ease your effort. It sounds simple, but the actual design is much more complicated. Torsion bar and amp. Control valve. The steering wheel's drive shaft connects to a torsion bar, that little rod you see in the video. Because it's slender, it can twist, which is key since it measures just how much force you're applying. Wrapped around the torsion bar is the steering control valve. As you turn the wheel, the torsion bar twists, which in turn rotates the control valve. The valve has openings that align the proper hydraulic oil pathways, letting the oil push the piston and provide steering assist. One big plus of hydraulic power steering is the clear road feel. Vibrations from the wheels come straight back to the steering wheel. But there are some downsides. The system is overly complex. Hydraulic oil needs regular changing, and over time there's a risk of leaks. Even when you're not steering, the pump draws some power from the engine, leading to unnecessary energy waste. A common question is, with the pump running all the time, won't the oil pressure just keep climbing? Don't worry, the system has a relief valve to keep everything in check. Besides the classic gear and rack setup, there's also the steering column plus gear fan design. In this setup, the steering column connects to the wheel while a gear fan attaches to the steering rod. This design later evolved into the recirculating ball steering mechanism. Simply put, they added plenty of ball bearings into the mix to overcome a lot of friction. And yes, this system can also be enhanced with hydraulic assist. The principle is essentially the same as the gear and rack hydraulic design. Now, aside from mechanical power steering, we can't ignore electric power steering. The structure here is refreshingly simple. Since it's electric, it naturally comes with a motor. With a motor, you need computer control. And with computer control, you need sensors. So, the heart of electric power steering is the torque sensor. Sounds a bit mystical, but it's really quite straightforward. You still have the torsion bar that twists. A gear paired with a sensing coil monitors the rotation. When you turn the steering wheel, the torsion bar measures your applied force. If you push hard, the bar twists more. The computer reads the increased rotation from the gear, then commands the motor to give you a boost. Nowadays, most electric power steering systems feature a motor directly linked to the steering rod. This modular design means that if something goes wrong, you can easily swap out the entire unit. There are even some quirky designs, like mounting the motor on top with a setup reminiscent of a turbine and worm gear. Lastly, when digging into future trends for electric power steering, some folks mention steer-by-wire. This system is even simpler. Imagine sitting in your cockpit as if you were racing on your home computer. The steer-by-wire era might be coming, but it may not necessarily be implemented in a steering column. After all, losing your brakes might not be as risky, but losing your steering, that's truly terrifying. 